Hey, Matt here. Just wanted to talk about scrape box footprints. Um, it's very important when you're trying to figure out what footprint to use to understand how scrape box works. It's not magic. It's just putting in what you tell it to and it's pulling stuff from the engine. So it's pulling Google results and Yahoo results and Bing results and AOL results based on what you tell it to. Same as if you went to Google, Yahoo, Bing, or AOL yourself and typed it into a browser. So you really have to understand how the engines work if you're going to understand how to use them accurately. So if I go into Scrapebox, I have the Harvester section up here. First box up here is where I can type um, a custom footprint that I want. So let's say All in Title. We'll just use that and go from there. If I type in All in Title and I have three keywords in here, cars, boats, and trucks, it's going to put All in Title in front of each one of these and pull results. Just like over here, I pulled results for cars. And then I use the custom footprint. If I leave this box blank, whatever I have here for keywords is what it's going to pull. So if I put cars, boats, and trucks, it's just going to pull cars, boats, and trucks. Um, when, whenever you want to make your own custom files you're going to use over and over again, you can write out your search string there in a notepad file, and then you can use the merge function and load that file, and it will add that search string to the front part of each one of your keywords there as well. So let's talk about that for a minute. If I wanted to understand how to search Google here for various things, I can go and just do a quick Google search, find uh, all kinds of sites. I just jumped onto googleguide.com, first one that comes up, has a lot of search operators. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on Google itself, on google.com, on how to search. Um, you should read that and understand how the various operators work. Certain operators only work in Google, certain ones only work in Yahoo, some work in both, and some have their own ramifications. Like, if I just search in title, for instance, um, up here, if I go and search, say, in URL, and I want to put in URL cars, it's going to bring back different results. Like, I can put powered by WordPress and then put in URL cars and get WordPress blogs about cars. But if I use all in title or all in URL, when I have the all in at the beginning, I can't put powered by WordPress in there. I can only put whatever I put after this colon is what comes up. So like, let's talk about all in title for a second. Say I want to put all in title. You can read it right here and it says, do not include any other search operators when using all in title. So I can't put all in title and then put cars and then put quotations powered by WordPress. It doesn't work that way. It's going to try to pull up powered by WordPress in the title. Plus, when you use the all in operator, it has to be at the beginning of the string. You can't stick it somewhere in the middle of the search string and put powered by WordPress up front. Whereas if I were to just use um, in title, for instance, I can put quotations powered by WordPress and then put in title cars and it's going to pull up what's in the title with cars. So you got to understand all the different operators. Um, Scrapebox supports six blog pl platforms that it'll comment to at the time of this video. Only three are built-in footprints, WordPress, Movable Type, and Blog Engine. It also supports Expression Engine, B2 Evolution, and Drupal. But those footprints aren't in there, so you need to make up your own. And you might want to make up your own for these three, too. And making up your own footprints allows you to do all kinds of things, depending on what you're after. So, some examples. Let's make up our own footprint. Now, I'm going to make up a footprint for Blogger. Scrapebox does not, at the time of this video, support commenting to Blogger. And so I'm specifically going to make it up on Blogger because it doesn't support it because I don't want people to take what we write and use this um, and go crazy with it and do stupid things. So let's talk about it. Let's say we pull up a couple of Blogger sites. You got to look for things on the website if you're trying to make a blog footprint to search for certain blogs, for instance, like Blogger pull up certain things. Every blogger, blogger page, page happens to say powered by blogger. So I know that's one thing I want to use. Let's look for on-page elements. Here it says post a comment. We pull up another web page as a blogger and it says post a comment. So we know 
that if we pull several pages up like this and look at it, it probably says post a comment on every blogger page that it has comments open on it. So we want to put that in there as well. And then we can look for other things like comment as, it says that on every page. Um, if comments are closed, it's unlikely to say post a comment or comment as. Same thing over here. Let's say we look at it and it says subscribe to post comments. It may not say that if comments are closed. So we look for things that we want. So let's make up a quick footprint with that. Let's say, let's quote powered by blogger, and then we're going to put a space and put plus because we want to have additional things that are required. When we put quotes, first of all, it pulls that string powered by blogger. So not in other orders, in that exact order. And then we're going to put plus, so we want to tell Google to, we're going to make a Google footprint, tell Google to add some more operators there. Then we want to also pull pages that say both powered by blogger and post a comment. But we noticed, say, as we were going through some web pages, that not every web page that has open comments says post a comment. Some people change it up with different themes to say other things. But all of the web pages said subscribe to post comments, or those other web pages that were open that didn't say post a comment said that. I'm just giving an example. You would want to find text on pages that um, indicate these kind of things. So let's say we can pull power, the, we have to pull powered by blogger and we want to pull something else, but it can be post a comment or subscribe to comments. So if either one of those are present in addition with powered by blogger, then we want Google to return that result. And then I just throw a plus sign at the end. Um, you don't necessarily need the plus sign at the end. It depends on how you're using your search string. Bear in mind at the end here is where it's going to put in whatever we put in here, all of our keywords. So it, cars, boats, trucks, it's going to throw out here on the end cars or boats or trucks or all that sort of stuff. It's all going to be right there. So. Um, some search strings that I've developed, I need a plus on the end because of the way that I'm working it. Sometimes you don't. You can just throw it in there and it's going to be fine. So again, um, this is all about figuring out what you want. So let's go back to Scrapebox and we'll, let's let's uh, get our, our keywords here. And then we'll merge in this file and we're going to pick up um, search string here. I loaded it up. And so see how it put powered by blogger plus post a comment or subscribe to post comments and then it added plus cars boats trucks it added it through each one and then when we search Google it's going to put each one of those in if I take this search string here well, let's get rid of these two real quick I'll give you any I'll show you here so this is powered by blogger plus post a comment or subscribe to post comments and cars and I'm gonna pull 10 results let's clear this list and let's just harvest this real quick and pull it, pull it down. All right, here's our 10 results right here. Now, if I go back over here to Google and type in that same search string and hit search. Now, depending on what data centers you pull from with your proxies and various things, you're your results can vary just a little bit because Google doesn't serve up all the same results from every data center every time, especially when they're doing updates. But let's look. Let's compare. We typed it into Google. We typed it into Scrapebox. Our first one is Youth Alive Wired, My Computer Helps, and the Hacker one. Let's go down here. Youth Alive, My Computer Helps, and we have the Hacker one right there. Now, Scrapebox, bearing in mind that it orders these in alphabetical order, so they may not necessarily be in the exact same order. But you can see that the results I'm getting with Google here, here, and here, and Jersey Gearhead are the same results I'm getting here, 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 and here, in here. So Scrapebox gives you the same results that you get from Google, exact same results. So you learn how to operate Google to get what you want. You even use this advanced search thing. It breaks things down for you in a different way and shows you what you can do. Like I can only use three ors. If I try to put a fourth one, it goes haywire and does other things. So I know I can type cars plus an exact word or phrase that's powered by blogger plus one or more of these phrases, post a comment and subscribe to post comments. 
And you'll notice how it strips out certain things and it adds dashes in here and does different things. Um, using this can also help you to understand how Google interprets things. So really the key number one is understanding that Scrapebox does just automate the process of getting scraping URLs from the engines. Two, it's going to give you exactly what you tell it to give you so you have to understand how to operate the engines manually in a web browser and when you use Scrapebox you're going to get the same results but if you try to just jump in with Scrapebox and deal with hundreds of thousands of URLs or millions of URLs all at once you're, you're not likely to learn what you need to learn you need to do it on a granular level and then once you understand that you can jump in and do it on a massive level and then Thirdly, you need to understand that um, there are certain operators and certain things you can't use in certain, like, I can't use certain criteria like the all in title. For instance, I don't think that works in Yahoo off the top of my head, but don't quote me on that. You can go and you can get nice Google searches and find pages that'll give you all the comparison charts between them, etc., etc. So you got to learn how to use your search operators, and then you got to understand that it's just going to feed you back what you tell it to and then making footprints really the best way to make a quality footprint I have some really nice footprints which I'm not gonna share but um, I've spent a lot of time on web pages that I'm looking for and done some comparison and look for similarities and look for text that always shows up on the same page um, all the pages that are open and you make your footprint based around that um, and you can get really targeted results and then you can pull different title results and different um, you know, site searches and all of that can be done in Scrapebox, but that's for another time. So anyways, that's basically uh, Scrapebox Footprints. Just understand what Scrapebox does, how it does it, and that it just automates Google and understand that and then um, look for similar text on pages and you should be good to go.